Hi guys, today I'm working on this watercolor painting based on the theme Harvest Moon Goddess. I was so excited to work on this theme. It sounded really exciting and interesting and there's a lot of different directions that could be done with it and a lot of details that I could really pull out of it. So today we're going to talk a bit about planning out this piece, what I was looking for as far as details that I could put into it, how to actually make this concept into a reality and yeah. I, uh, I love that process so much. I love picking apart concepts and themes and figuring out how can I turn that into a visual story of those words. So when I'm transitioning from a concept that's just words and ideas like this into working on an actual visual storytelling of that theme, I like to sit down and think about what are my actual associations with the words. So the the harvest moon absolutely makes me think of the end of summer when everything's all dry and golden and it makes me think the fields that are going to be cut down and the smokiness in the air there's so many things that i associate with this time of year and i i love those connections they have i was especially excited about working around a summery end of summer theme for a nighttime setting and a nighttime scene because that's really the time that I like the most about summer. I don't really like the day as much, but I love summer nights. So I have all these like feelings that are attached to this kind of theme and time of year. And then to push it a little bit farther, it's attached to a certain type of character. I decided that I wanted to make a goddess type figure that would represent this time of year and the moon and just all of those, all of those elements that come together. So she's going to be this personification of, of the moon and again, that time of year. So after I have basically those bullet points of what I wanted to have in this piece, I can move on to figuring out what exactly I need to do to portray that. So I knew that there had to be a goddess and the moon and also some way to show a harvest kind of environment or time of year. So I knew that there would be fields specifically. So those three elements I wanted in this piece. So beyond that, it was time to start figuring out what details to put in here. And I love that. I love planning out the details. That's my favorite part. That's not true. That's one of my many favorite parts of working on a piece. Uh, so I knew right off the bat part of the the way that I was going to portray the character as a goddess is I wanted her to be larger than life. So I wanted her to look like a giant in comparison to the environment that she was in, which is the fields and, and the moon behind her. I wanted her to feel very in sync with the moon itself and almost to that same scale. Oh, and I did want to say that this is actually going to be an exclusive print for the Citrine tier on Patreon for the month of August. So if you'd like one of these prints, the only way to get it is to make sure to sign up for the Citrine tier by August 31st. There's a link down in the description that'll take you over there if you're interested. And this is actually going to be the full size of the original piece. So all the prints are going to be 11 by 14 inches and you'll get the postcard as well. I am so excited with how this one turned out. I can't wait to send it off to all of my Citrine patrons and uh, I want to give a huge thank you to my my current patrons but but anyways that link is in the description that'll take you over there so the way that I portrayed her as a giant is I uh, first made sure that I used good reference of a person where the camera is actually below her so you're looking up at her uh, that works because I wanted us as the viewer looking at this picture to feel like we're a normal sized person looking up at her and uh, by the way, I, I bought myself a couple packs of really high quality artist references of figures and different poses and different angles and everything. And that has completely changed the game for me as far as working with references. It's been so helpful to be able to have just a ton of high quality images that are ready to go and I can have my sketch and then pick through them and find and piece together something that's exactly what I'm looking for. I highly recommend it. <laughs> I really, really like that. But, but anyways, I found a good reference for that. But beyond that, I decided that I also wanted to really connect her with the space that she was taking up with the way that I colored her. So 
the bottom of her legs and the bottom of her dress are going to be blue colored, tinted a little bit so that it connects her and grounds her to the mountains behind her and the fields. And then as it rises up, as the character rises up, she gets closer to the moon coloring for the most part, as far as how I portrayed her dress. And I think that that helps it. I think it helps her feel a little bit more one with the the fields and the mountains below, which I think helps her look a little bit more like she's within the same scope, the same scale as the environment that she's in, rather than being this normal sized small person on a field. I, I think that it makes her feel a little bit more like she's a peer with, with the environment, with the space. And of course that also ties a little bit into atmospheric perspective, whereas things get farther away, they get a little bit bluer. I chose to be specific with it, with just having it tinged the bottom of her character, and then it fades off to make her look more warm, like the color of the moon itself. And then I knew right off the bat, my association with Harvest Moon is that I wanted it to be a golden moon, so it was going to be this golden yellow color, which was really helpful because that was kind of like a cornerstone for the rest of the color palette and how I chose everything else. And uh, yeah, how I built up all of the colors and the values around it. I chose to give her really dark hair so that it would stand off from the moon right behind her. But then I also wanted her dress to mimic the color of the moon just a bit as it fades up and becomes lighter and brighter and eventually white. And I chose to give her a scythe for harvesting purposes, because if she's a goddess of the harvest moon, I figure she'd probably have a scythe. It seemed pretty fitting. I don't know actually if this smaller handheld type of scythe has a different name than than the like two-handed one that's at the end of the stick, like what a Grim Reaper traditionally has. But, but I decided to give the scythe a Damascus steel texture, which is I, I think so beautiful. So that was really fun to get in with all the texturing and marbling that happens in the metal like that. I decided that I wanted to lean a little bit more into texturing with this piece in certain areas. So for the moon, of course, I'm, I'm really pushing that wet on wet wash. I wanted it to feel really loose and energetic and it allowed me to really quickly knock out those craters of the moon where where it needed to recede a little bit more and uh, I loved that. I loved that process so much and I also wanted there to be just a bit of texturing in the fields below her. I wanted it to very subtly feel like it was made up of a lot of little tiny plants without being too overboard. So that was an area that I did not want it to be a really smooth wash. I, I made sure that I mixed certain pigments that actually kind of granulate naturally. They like to spread out a little bit on the palette. And I uh, also went back in and dropped in a little bit of more of a golden green into certain areas so that it does have a little bit of a wet on wet kind of wash to it. But the blue of the sky, I wanted it to be as smooth as possible. And I'm actually really happy with how it turned out. It can really be a struggle when I'm painting really big spaces like this and I want it to be dark and really rich and I'm happy with how it turned out. It took, I think, maybe three washes of uh, the same mixture of paint. I didn't darken it anymore or add any more pigment. I just rewashed it so that it has this really rich glazed look to it. And uh, yeah, I'm really happy with that. And the big benefit to doing multiple glazes to reach that final result is that it actually helps camouflage some variations in the wash where it might not be as smooth as possible. If you go back over it with that same wash, it can oftentimes, depending on the pigments that you're using, smooth it out so that it becomes a much smoother wash. I definitely recommend putting that into your plan so that you don't end up with an area that's much darker than you intended originally. So. So if your plan was to go several shades darker and you start off lighter and it, it actually gives you the room to be able to build up that wash rather than putting it down at the first shot and it's the value that you need, but it's not quite smooth enough. So as always, I like to make some pretty specific plans for where I want the highest contrast to be between the darks and the lights and where I want the brightest colors to be that 
highest pop of saturation so that I can really guide the eye where I want it to be, where I can tell the viewer, even subconsciously, what's the most important element of the piece. So the most saturated element is the moon behind the character. And then the highest level of contrast is in the character herself with the dark hair and her white dress, like right in front of the moon. So that helps it all tie together and draw the eye into that center area so that hopefully it, uh, it all just revolves around her face and really just sticks that as the most important element. And I almost never pull out my gold paints anymore, but this one seemed particularly fitting. So I pulled out some really shiny metallic paint and I used it to add some little details, some jewelry on the character and just a little bit of a glistening details here and there throughout the piece. And don't forget the print of this piece is exclusive to my Citrine patrons for the month of August. So make sure that you're signed up by August 31st if you'd like an exclusive print of this piece. There's a link down in the description that'll take you over there. And of course I have the original painting available at my shop. There's again that link in the description that'll take you to my shop. And as always, I wanna give a huge thank you to all of my patrons over on Patreon. You guys are amazing. I can't thank you enough for all of the support that you show me. I am just so incredibly grateful to, to all of you guys. Thank you so much for that. And uh, that's it for today. So I'll be back with some more painting next time. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you then.